Hey, welcome to another part of our database tutorial. We're in the PHP 2 class, and I think this is part three. We are in the process of building a database service. So user data service is our class, and we have just created a connection and found out how many rows there are in our results. Earlier, I created a, an error when I, had a, when I had a syntax error in my SQL statement. And the error result that showed on the screen wasn't very clear. It said there was a non-object. So I'd like to add another if statement to check to see if this result value is valid. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to say if there is not a result. In other words, the result has no value, not just zero counts, but nothing at all. Then we can probably assume that uh, the SQL problem, the SQL statement has an error. And then let's exit. So let's test this out. If I run my, uh, if I come back to my uh, page here, uh, I've got five results right now for the value A. However, I switch back to here and let's put in some bad typing. So instead of the word like, let's put in a double K and save that. Now when I refresh the page, I assume that there is a SQL statement that has an error. So that seems to be a better way to handle the error that uh, I saw earlier. Let's fix our like statement so it doesn't have any error anymore. Okay, so now we can see in our results that we have five numbers of rows or something like that. Now I'd like to go through and loop through each of those rows and get out the data. So let's switch back to our manual and our PHP documentation. Let's check to see what we've done so far. So we have a connection. We have ourselves a uh, check to see if there's any errors. We created a SQL statement where we want to select some rows. Then we uh, check to see if the results actually exist, if there are zero rows, and then finally, if we get to this part, we have ourselves a, uh, um, a list where we can check to see what's in the results. Now, there's two cases here. This case here that's mentioned says, this will only work if there's one result. The second example here says, let's do five actors. And so this result will be more than just uh, one row. In their example, they're using five random actors in a list. You can see from their SQL statement that they are doing uh, random limit five. And so we don't actually want randomness, but we're going to do something similar. What they do is they create a while loop and they do a fetch association command. Let's check that out and then we'll adapt it. So I'm going to copy this and put it into my code here. And so right after where it says I found the number of results, we're going to start a loop. So while it is equal to uh, a result. So this means if as long as we get a new person coming out of this, we're going to be able to print them. So uh, without worrying about formatting, I'm going to use print R and type in person. Hmm. So I was expecting this to actually print something. Uh, let's go check it out why. As soon as I collect, uh, as soon as I chose return here, uh, the, the program stops working. So let's change that to an echo. And now we should see echo and then follow it up with the while loop. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so you can see the results now. We have an array and you can see all the pieces of the array. So this is an associative array. ID gets three, first name gets Mark, and so on. So if we wanted to print that person in a little bit more elegant manner, we can say uh, something like this. All right, so we are going to print the person ID equals and then show the associative array item. So person ID equals ID and so on for the rest of them. So name equals person, square bracket name, last name equals person, square bracket last name. And so that should print a different format. So we have a little more control over how the data will look on the screen. Okay, so you can see the second line here is a little bit more of a sophisticated way. So I'm going to comment out the um, previous and let's uh, just run the, the statements as I had them here. All right, so I'm getting uh, items that are printing to the screen. It's not quite what I want, but it's close. So in the uh, final results, I'm trying to echo out what the uh, results are from the function. The function itself is not supposed to print to the screen, so I, what, what I want to do is comment out the places where I'm printing. 
Instead, I want to create an, a list, an array, and uh, build it up with a bunch of people in it. So, just before we begin this list, I'm going to create a new array. Let's call it person array, and it's going to be an array. Now, array operations allow us to build lists of things. Let's switch over to our PHP documentation again. And I'm looking at this uh, function called array push. So array push is what I'm trying to use, and let's see an example. So let's say I start off with an array of orange and a banana, and then I want to add on apple and raspberry. So I use array push, and then I print it. So that's what I, pretty much what I'm trying to do here is add items to an array and then return the array. So instead of printing, I'm just going to say a person array, or let's see, what was it? Array push, and let's see the... Uh, Array value, the first one is person array, and I want to add on the person. So then when we're done with the while loop, we should be able to return person array. Okay, so now if we were to put in notes in here, I would put in here in the comments is returns an array of persons. And so there's probably more details to that, but that at least tells the uh, note at the top of what I'm trying to get. So let's go back to here and see what happens when I try to echo out an array of persons. I should get an error. Let's go back into our local host and refresh. So I have an issue. It says you're trying to echo out an array and I'm trying to convert it to a string. Doesn't happen, but I will tell you that you gave me an array to print. So we can, we can change that. Instead of echo, we can try print. R, and then in parentheses it will print the entire structure of the array so we can see the results better. Let's try that again. And now you can see we have an array. So the first item in the array is zero and the entire cluster here is part of item zero. And then item one. Okay, so we're printing here and you can kind of read it, but it would be a nicer format if it would put it into columns and things so we can see better what the arrays are. So let's look at a couple of uh, pieces of documentation. So we're going to first of all use the print r command and so print r will just print the val values in an array and uh, it has an optional true false uh, second parameter and we're going to change that to true. It says here uh, the return parameter means it won't actually print the results but it will return them. You'll see what that works in a minute. The second item is I'm looking at tutorials point at this tag called pre. And so you can see that pre is used to retain the spaces and fonts and everything else in line breaks. So we're going to use pre and print r together. Let's see how that works. So back into my testing, instead of uh, printing this just like we have it here, I'm going to echo and I'm going to use the HTML tag pre and then attach the uh, item for print r and then also do a close tag on pre. Then the second item is to add the true statement in here which will add this as a returned value. So it can return and create an, an entire string. So let's save that, check the results out here again and see what they look like. So there you go. Now you can see that we have an array of arrays. So this is the person's array, and then in each side, in each item in the array is a list of a person. Okay, so it seems like this is working now. And I'm going to take out all the comments for these uh, testing items here. So back into my user database service, and let's see. We don't want to do any of this here, so let's take that out. That was for testing. And let's see, this is another testing item, so comment that out. Let's do a return null on this one, so... There's no, uh, no results coming back. And here, this is testing. Let's take that out. So all of the items that we're printing instead of returning are now commented out. So save it, and let's come back and refresh. And so we have a pure arrangement of the array now. Just now, as I look at this, uh, it just can't be helped. But this looks so much like JSON data. that I just want to show you real quick how to encode data into the JSON format. So let's come back into my testing only. I'm going to comment out this line and instead put in something called JSON encode. And inside there, we're going to take the uh, 
the data that we just captured from our search and print that instead. So save that and let's come back to our page and refresh. And you have JSON data instantly. And so you've just created a JSON REST service in one line of code. All right, let's switch back into our user data service. I'm going to collapse this so we can see uh, just the top line function name. So now for the rest of the tutorial, I want you to create a few more of these. So we're going to have a function and we're going to do find by last name. And let's say do the same thing with a, a search. And also, let's see, got to spell things. Also, I'd like you to create something called find by ID, uh, a function that would be delete uh, item, and let's delete by the ID number. And then finally, we'll do an update one. So this should take the uh, ID number of a person and an array of a person and then do an uh, update in, in the database. And so the first one's done for you by example, and let's see, we got one, two, three, four, a bunch more that need to be uh, implemented as well. So uh, you probably don't need any videos to be able to do those. You just need to know the SQL statements, but uh, we'll see. I might be able to create some uh, helpful videos that will take you through step by step on each of these. And uh, that'll ease your mind if you're having trouble learning SQL statements.